cool uh thank you lipika thank you for that uh, beautiful introduction and uh, yes uh please put down your expectations in the chat uh if you have any uh from the session so uh we'll get started uh so today we will be starting with uh avoiding misconfigurations uh we are using tfsec for terraform so we'll we'll talk uh mostly about that one tool and uh Lipika introduced us uh, briefly. Uh, I'm Nalini Kant, uh, often called as Nal. Uh, I am playing a product owner role right now. Uh, I am also security community lead for ThoughtWorks India along with Nikhil. Uh, uh, my primary interests in security are uh, DevSecOps and threat modeling. Uh, over to you, Sudhansh. Hey, I'm Sudhansh. I have seven plus years of experience working with ThoughtWorks for more than six plus years. Uh, I'm an infrastructure consultant working with multiple clients. Uh, in multiple uh, client, uh, what's a multiple cloud providers, uh, mostly interested in scalable and secure cloud solutions. Well, cool. Uh, so there is one expectation uh, which aligns um, to what we're going to talk today. So which is uh, how uh, TFSec is going to be useful uh, to look at the security part. So what are we going to cover? We are going to talk about misconfiguration a bit and. Uh, We'll go to cloud misconfigurations. I'll uh, show you some of the trends that were captured in 2021. And uh, then we'll get into brief intro of Terraform. Uh, we'll uh, talk about some SAST tools for Terraform. Uh, and then we'll uh, introduce you to TFSec. Uh, on the demo side, uh, we have uh, TFSec installation. How do we use it? Uh, what are the checks that we do? Uh, what are the custom checks that we can add? Uh, how can we ignore checks uh, and expiry to it? Uh, how can it be put on uh, CI uh, and also on your IDs like IntelliJ or VS Code? And uh, uh, we'll end with the conclusions and uh, some of the recommendations from our side. Uh, so that's what um, this uh, session covers. Uh, just a disclaimer, we are not going to go deeper into cloud aspects or Terraform aspects in this session. So we are going to talk about how these misconfigurations can be avoided when we write Terraform code. So yeah, any questions, uh, please put down on chat. Uh, either Sudam or I, uh, whosoever is not speaking, will try to answer them. So yeah, to start with, uh, the basic definition of misconfiguration is uh, an incorrect or suboptimal configuration of an information system or system component that may lead to vulnerabilities. So this is a, a definition. So uh, any anywhere where you miss uh, configuring something properly or you do it incorrectly or you do it insufficiently then uh, that's what we call it as misconfiguration and yep so this misconfiguration has been on os top 10 list for quite some time uh, and it actually uh, has uh, Sorry, uh, this is because my system is, I think uh, Zoom has taken all the resources and the system has got slow. So misconfiguration has been there for quite some time um, on the OS top 10 list. And it actually uh, is making huge impact after our team started moving to cloud. And uh, today we are gonna talk about uh, when you configure your cloud, how these misconfigurations can happen and how can you avoid using uh, some of these uh, tools like SASTs and uh, as an infrastructure consultant or a developer or anyone on the team, how do we worry about it and how do we fix it? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So moving on, uh, some of the examples of misconfigurations, right? So uh, these are uh, basically from AWS and Azure. Uh, this is common for any cloud that you use, uh, including with the major ones and the minor ones uh, that are there in the market. So if you are setting up, uh, an Amazon um, EBS service. So if you are not making the data encrypted, then or if you are misconfiguring the encryption part on the EBS service, uh, whenever you lose access to this EBS service, you lose all the data without encryption. And uh, that is a huge miss. And that has happened uh, big time. Likewise, uh, AWS uh, cloud trial configuration changes. That also has affected the uh, you know, um, systems big time. Uh, Enabling Amazon S3 uh, to block public access to AWS accounts. This has been one of the major incidents across the world over the last two, two, three years where people lost so much of confident uh, confidential data. 
so misconfiguring the access to s3 or again on the same uh, azure advisory service uh, uh, cloud conformity checks and misconfigurations if you are not configuring this well uh, that may lead to lose uh, your uh, data again and azure activity logs uh, uh, if you don't configure uh, that particular uh, rules for the activity logs that will also lead to misconfigurations and when you are setting up azure virtual machines uh, if you don't uh, set up uh, the rules like install approved extensions only enable automatic os updates and all of that properly or if you miss to configure them or if you configure them wrongly uh, then that would affect the system big time and uh, again disabling anonymous access to blob containers on azure if you are using microsoft azure so these uh, misconfigurations are some examples uh, uh, why do we have some here uh, we just wanted to tell uh, show you how these kind of misconfigurations would look like so these misconfigurations are just examples uh, there are so many misconfigurations that can happen uh, we'll also show you some checks that uh, we do uh, in a later point in time so these are just examples and then these are uh, so this is some of the data that that was captured in 2021 like 52% uh, of the times uh, misconfigurations leads to unauthorized access to instances or databases when i was talking about instances it's your virtual machines or ec2 uh, instances in aws and 39% uh, these misconfigurations have led to system downtime events and 34 time 34 percent of the times uh, it it led to compliance violation events uh, like we were talking in the example the ebs encryption also will help you to get some of your compliance checks done because you have the data at uh, rest is getting encrypted uh, so that will cover a lot of compliances like pci hipaa uh, gdpr etc and 32 percent uh, object storage uh, 32 percent of the times object storage breaches have happened so this is huge and uh, if we look at uh, you know the real time breaches uh, so there are so many uh, we have listed down and uh, uh, there are a couple of them uh, we just wanted to talk about it uh, 5 lakh loan documents uh, you know got uh, breached or got uh, accessed by un uh, unauthorized people just because the aws bucket was left open without any security protocols and there were uh, so many water records uh, that got uh, you know, got taken away by uh, malicious uh, people on the internet just because the server was left open and the list goes on. So these are some of the examples that uh, we've, we've given here. And we'll share this uh, deck after the uh, uh, session and go through, uh, go through them. These are interesting ones. And uh, sometimes you feel like these are simple things that can be avoided with just a little bit of uh, intuition and uh, just having simple tools like tfsec on the pipeline to understand what misconfigurations we are having so moving on uh, i just want to walk you through this one particular uh, uh, site uh, so this is uh, this is an article that was written on cloud misconfigurations that leads to cloud security breaches this has got huge insights on what exactly is the misconfiguration that led to the maximum number of breaches and uh, what exactly um, in AWS and Azure, uh, I, I think I my system has taken away all the resources. Uh, Sudam, do you want to share? Uh, yeah, I can do that. One second, this is still irritating. Cool. Uh, so this uh, this is a very good insight. Uh, so this has so many charts that uh, uh, show you like what are the greatest uh, misconfiguration areas when it comes to AWS. It is AWS uh, cloud form. So that's don't don't move. Yeah. So can you go up once uh, to the previous chart? So these are the high level services like AWS cloud formation, AWS, no, the second one, uh, AWS cloud trail, uh, AWS EBS. Uh, these are some of the services that were misconfigured big time. Uh, the misconfigured rates for these services are uh, way too huge. 
so if you go down uh this also talks about what are the specific rules uh, that were misconfigured so for example ebs uh, snapshot is not encrypted for uh, 18 lakh times 18 lakh plus times and uh, instance in auto scaling group uh, is misconfigured for 46 lakh times so something like that so these are uh, some of the trends that were there uh, this is a very huge article uh, it also talks about azure uh, misconfigurations what are those azure uh, services that were misconfigured for the greatest number of times and what are the specific rules in azure that were misconfigured uh, big time so this data is from uh, june 20 to june 21 uh, which is uh, roughly around an year uh, and uh, which is uh, very uh, good because this was uh, as latest as uh, 10 months before right so uh this article uh, when i read this i didn't uh, find anything on gcp but you might uh, if you look at finding for gcp i think you will find it uh, somewhere as well so but again any cloud uh, this misconfigurations are common so uh, this article specifically talks about aws and azure but an interesting article go through that uh, later so 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 many misconfigurations uh, every cloud provider every service uh, is uh, having that sort of misconfigurations and why is it happening so some of the data from 2018 and 2020 tells that the misconfiguration happens because people who are configuring it uh, are not doing it properly and every time uh, one of the report from 2018 tells that uh, 424% increase because there is a human error and uh, recent gartner uh, uh, indicated that 95% of the cloud inc incidents will be the customer fault uh, here the customers are basically the developers who are using the cloud ecosystem uh, to configure or to uh, provision their uh, environments on the cloud so there is a huge factor in human misconfiguration and how can that be avoided because with intuition we can only avoid to some extent but there should always be a security check on top of that uh, where you check whether you have configured uh, things properly on the uh environment or not so that's where we thought like uh, tfsec is helping us we started using it on our teams big time uh, so we thought uh, this is helping us so let's share this knowledge with others so to start with uh, we started uh, using terraform uh, terraform is basically uh, infrastructure as a code software tool uh, it helps you codify your infrastructure uh, it helps you you know manage infrastructure across different clouds create reproducible infrastructure so this is a simple uh, infrastructure as a code tool that we started using and when we started using or when we started writing any code right it's always possible to do uh, static analysis uh, on that tool so with that idea uh, we thought uh, looking for terraform so we found four tools uh, we'll go there uh, but before that what is static analysis uh, static analysis uh, actually happens on the code uh, it will not happen on the code that executes it happens on the code that exists so it needs uh, access to your source code uh, it is very fast um, you can get the results in like a uh, blink of a second and uh, it provides you very very quick feedback and uh, this can be set up without much configuration or customization so when we show the demo you will see like how easy it is to set up this tool and understand the misconfigurations over there and while looking for tools we found so many tools out of this there are four tools that uh, actually uh, caught our attention and uh, starting with uh, tfsec uh, uh, tfsec is one of the tools and uh, that's what we are talking about today there are other tools like check ov contest and terrascan these are also the good ones uh, but why tfsec uh, because uh, we have uh, tfsec uh, started uh, being assessed in our tech radar uh, from may 2020 it moved to trail in october 2020 and in the latest tech radar edition in march 2022 uh, we suggested uh, everyone in the industry to adopt uh, tfsec because we found that this tool has the capability uh, to prevent uh, misconfigurations on the cloud and it helps us big time uh, so we recommend tech radar we recommend tfsec on tech radar as well so we thought like okay let's go with tfsec so that was the intu intuition we have behind adopting tfsec so basically uh, coming to tfsec what it is it's a tool that uh, allows you to do some static analysis of your terraform code and potentially to spot misconfigurations right 
it has so many features that are there that are there uh, that it provides uh, it has some checks for misconfigurations across different cloud providers uh, mostly all the major ones uh, aws azure and gcp and also some minor ones uh, uh, and hundreds of inbuilt rules it evaluates different expressions and uh, stuff like that so it also supports multiple output formats uh, it is configurable you can also add custom checks uh, so you can also use it in your local on your ides and also on your pipelines so it's a simple binary easy to use uh, so these are some of the features that uh, tfsec offers to you uh, so this is uh, where we have uh, the theory part for this session so this is what uh, we're going to do right now so going to the hands on part i'll hand over it to sudamsh and in case if you have any questions in the chat i'll take them right uh, i have also prepared a uh, repository for the session and you can also clone this repository and uh, try it while we are uh, working on this parallelly as well so this is the repository with, with which we can plug and play and it does not have any sensitive information as well so yeah so currently i'm using uh, my terminal to install Ter uh, terraform using brew brew so if i say brew install tfsec it would be downloaded to my system and not just T uh, brew but tfsec is already present in multiple uh, package managers say yum uh, or app or uh, yeah in most of the package managers that is, that are available uh, and how do i check the uh, tfsec that is installed is tfsec version my current version is 1.19 uh, which is the latest of terraform that is available uh, tfsec that is available and yeah so now i am opening the repository that i currently have so in this a quick quick show of the repository it has uh, tfsec which has a good code according to static analysis tf fix and uh, there is a tf vulnerable so as part of this tf vulnerable i have a terraform code uh, with for example there is a deploy s3 uh, currently I, I would like to play around with aws provider uh, resources of terraform and run tfsec accordingly and try to see what are the checks that it is doing right so if i under the deploy s3 there is this provider.tf the current provider is aws and my default region is set to eu west one and okay let's open s3 right so i i have a snippet of terraform code to create an s3 whether is it valid code or not yeah let's quickly check this right so to show you i have vulnerable code which is tf python vulnerable and I'm getting into deploy S3. As part of this, I have S3.tf. And let's let me run Terraform validate to see if there is it is a valid code first. Yeah, it says it's success in Terraform is configuration is valid. Okay. Now if I have TF check in my system, let me check again. I have version 1.19, which is the latest. And if I run TF6 space dot, uh, dot is the directory that you want to run the TF sec on. So I see it has passed three and there are seven potential problems that are detected in this. Okay, uh, maybe let's go one by one. What are the potential problems here, right? So out of which uh, I'll, I'll try to go through one by one here. <clears throat> All right, uh, maybe let's go with one thing. Yeah, I, this is my favorite, uh, let's see. So I have the ACL as authenticated read, right? So generally we feel like authenticated read is uh, something that you, after you log in, you will have the access. But the, the, this authenticated read has more than what we expect. That is like anybody with, uh, if I want to know what it is about, I can open this link. This link redirects me to TFSEC website talking about this one, uh, this misconfiguration. If you see this misconfiguration, this actually talks about anybody in AWS across uh, all AWS accounts. If they are able to authenticate it uh, to an AWS account, they will have a read access to this particular S3 bucket. So, which we don't want, right? So, we only want it to be a private or uh, only uh, accessible to our account. 
So here there's a good description of uh, the misconfiguration also. If you see, he gives us an uh, insecure example and also a secure example. Insecure example could be a public read or it could be authenticated read or authenticated write. So a secure example can be make it as a private. So what would I do is I'll make this change to private and rerun. So previously I have seven potential problems and rerun the TF set, it would show me a six potential problems. Okay. What else uh, are the other problems? For now, if you see, uh, and also if you see the results, right? There is a low, uh, there is a CVRT level associated to a particular result it is showing. This is a low CVRT, bucket does not have corresponding public access block. I mean, uh, if you actually see this uh, Terraform code, right? You would directly see that there is no AC, uh, there's no public block where it can stop the access to the S3 bucket. That's where, uh, that's where this is recommending us to add a public block. Uh, and this has no public access block. So no restriction of public buckets, uh, which means, yeah, which means anybody can access this. Uh, so if you see insecure example talks about adding a public access block, uh, but without any configurations, if you see in the secure example, it says you need to add the public access block and say restrict public buckets as well. Okay, maybe I'll use this uh, in the code. Now that I have a public access block and I'm changing this to my demo S3 bucket and I'm saying restrict public bucket as true. And let me see if this is valid again. So I'll say Terraform validate. Yeah, it says the configuration is valid and let me run the Terraform check. Uh, and you see now I only have four potential problems. Uh, the other one is ignore public uh, ACLs as true. So I can also set that here directly, ignore public ACLs as true. And what else uh, is again, this is public access block does not block public policies. So then I can also say block public ACLs true. And what else? Uh, it says put public call, a public ACL specified can make public, uh, make objects public. So I also don't want uh, the objects to be public. So for, for that, I can say public, uh, or I can, if I'm not sure, I can actually open this and go see the secure example, Bob, Bob public ACLs, which I already have. So let's see, uh, let's rerun the DF second see if it's fine. Okay, there are still two more potential problems. Block public policy. Yeah. Block public policy as true. Okay. What else is the other problem? If you see here, it's a high CVRT. And what does this talk about? Is, uh, using AWS managed keys does not allow. It talks about S3 encryption. And currently, my S3 encryption is AES 256. Uh, the recommendation from TFSEC is to use a KMS uh, based encryption. So what, what would I do is uh, see the example of how it is and then try to change things accordingly. So it is asking me to use AWS KMS SSC algorithm with the KMS master key. Uh, okay, master key is a KMS ID. That would be my KMS key name. And if I run the DFSEC again, Okay, so we don't have any problems currently. Uh, and according to DFSEC, uh, it, it looks good. This is an example of a AWS S3 bucket. Uh, and I also have several examples for, uh, for example, if I want to deploy a Bastion host, uh, how do I do that? So for that, firstly, I'll create a network. In the network, uh, I'll firstly create a VPC. I'll, I'll create a VP, uh, AWS security group and I'll create a, a security group rule. Um, 
So in this, if I, I'll go to deploy uh, EC2 and run DFSEC again here. I'll see several potential problems. There are five potential problems, okay? Out of which, uh, this is a low CVRT, right? Uh, it talks about low security group explicitly uh, using the default description. I'm, I'm actually okay to uh, ignore this low security group. So how do I add and ignore in this, right? Uh, yeah, this is a security group. It does not have, uh, it, it does not have a description. So I'll add and ignore. So well, how do you ignore it is using uh, comments here, say slash dfsec, ignore. And then uh, the ID of this, the ID is this. I'll save this. Uh, let me run this DFSEC again. You would see one passed, one ignored, four potential problems. The ignored one is actually this one where I don't want to add a description to my security group. Also, uh, in DFSEC, if you look at uh, the help of DFSEC, there are the it, it provides some multiple uh, options in the DFSEC as well. For example, I don't want all the lower CVRT sh to show me in the DFSEC report then there is something called as minimum CVRT string. For example, uh, I would, what I would say is hyphen dot hyphen hyphen uh, hyphen M and my minimum CVRT is only high. I don't want low or further down, I would say, then I would say high. So this will not show me low potential problems. It will only show me higher and uh, critical anything above it. Right? And uh, yeah. That's one more thing. And uh, let me, let, let's see the critical problem here, right? So the critical problem here, it talks about is your port exposed to the internet and set a more uh, restrictive CIDR range. So since it is a bash and host, what can I think of is instead of opening it to opening the port to public IP, uh, public entirely, maybe I can use my public IP here. And this is just a demo purpose. Uh, So this is the public IP of mine. So since it's a bashing post, if I uh, run the TFSEC again, you would see that critical vulnerability is gone. One more thing uh, is, okay, now I have several ignores already, but uh, if, I, if I want to have ignore only for this print, say for the next 15 days, I can also add a e expiry date for the ignore which is like uh, exp colon 20, uh, maybe today is 27. So I'd say zero two, okay. 2022 hyphen zero five hyphen zero. Which means till March 2nd is this uh, ignore valid. After March 2nd, it will not be valid. That can, that's how you can also not just set the ignore, but you can also have an expiry date for the ignore. Um, yeah. And this is for EC2 as an example. Uh, uh, right. And, uh, and another most important thing is IAM, right? So you generally see a lot of people have, whenever you're writing IAM rules and policies, we generally set to have uh, stars in our uh, IAM policies. Uh, and not just that, uh, okay, let's see, this is the code of IAM that I have. And let's see what TFSEC talks about this, right? So, it says there are two potential problems. One problem is no policy wildcards. So as soon as I open this link, you see in the IAM section, these are the checks that TFSEC looks for. And out of which no policy wildcard is shown here. Uh, so generally, if you are using stars, uh, TFSEC, I mean, generally in security also, any star is not uh, not so recommended because you need to be more explicit, uh, more, more, uh, uh, more particularly defined what is the permission or the action that you want to give rather than giving everything. So, yeah, like, like you see here to the left, uh, these all are the services of AWS that TFSEC looks for. Uh, DynamoDB, EBS, EC2, uh, for example, EC2 has these. 
ECR has these. And if you go further down in the Azure space, what all you have? If you go further down, it also has Google, it also has Kubernetes, OpenStack, Oracle, all of these clouds. Um, adding to this, like we have seen uh, how TF6 we can run. Now, another question is, uh, I have moved between the folders and uh, I'm running the TF6 in particular, right? So if I want to run recursively across folders, right? So under TF vulnerable, if I want to go to EC2 uh, or irrespective of that, I want to go or check all my Terraform files, I can go to, I, there is a function, uh, there is an option called hyphen hyphen force hyphen uh, all hyphen, something called as hyphen hyphen force all DIRs. This gives me the entire uh, folder structure and looks for all TF site files and gives me the potential problems in it. Okay. Now this looks good. Now, if I want further more options, right? Uh, one other thing is uh, if I want uh, in multiple formats output, now there is uh, this options, right? If I want options to be say CSV, uh, it provides me in CSV format. If I want output in JSON, it can provide me in JSON. Interestingly, it will also provide output in Sarif. Uh, Sarif is the sec uh, static analysis report format. Uh, I'll tell you what is the uh, importance of this when I'm showing, showcasing you how do I use this in CL. Apart from this, uh, now these are the default uh, and uh, and benchmark uh, rules that we get from the TF set, right? From my project or from my company, if I want uh, any compliance uh, rules that I want to add. There's an option to do that also in TFSEC. Uh, the option is do, done using custom checks. For example, if for any instance that I'm creating, uh, let's look at this example, right? This is a, this is, uh, you can write custom checks in JSON and also in YAML. One, this is an example for YAML. If you see for AWS instance, any instance that you're creating, you want to see whether there is a tag called parse center. And you can have this CVRT as error and with the error message and the related link. So if I want to, and uh, also I also have another custom check where if there is any resource of security group created, I want the name of the security group name to end with minus SG. So these two all are the custom uh, checks that I have and how, how, how can I add this custom checks, right? There's one way to add the custom uh, checks is, uh, for example, if I go to deploy EC2 and uh, run this, say I can provide the custom check DIR uh, with the directory path of it. And it will tell me, yeah, you see custom demo 002, security group name convention is not followed. The security name uh, group name is actually uh, underscore SG, but what I want is hyphen SG. So I'll, what I'll, to fix this uh, as a quick thing, I can actually go here and say hyphen SG and rerun this. Yeah, so that would be gone. Check again. Or, uh, yeah. If you actually go to the custom checks,
So you can have multiple things, say is present or ends with or contains uh, from the spec that you are trying to write. Uh, yeah, so for instance, you can check for tags, say value as cost center. You can also see for cost center value is not given in the tag. Like custom label 001, where the tags is not having a cost center tag. So maybe let's try to add this here. So this tag, which has value as cross center, and this. Seems like it's showing me again. Um, there's some issue, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah, there's some issue, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this is how uh, you write a custom check and provide the path correspondingly. All right, uh, now, now we have seen several examples of this. Uh, these all are the custom checks uh, that you can write for, and you can write it in JSON and also in YAML. And you can also, there is also something called as uh, TF check, check gen. This using this utility, you can validate whether your custom uh, check is correct or wrong. Now we have seen all of these examples of TF check. Let's see uh, how do I use this in CI. Okay. Let me show uh, now. In this repository, I'm using this CI called GitHub Actions. Uh, let's see, firstly, if I want to do it as uh, in like using shell script way, right? So using shell script way, what I'm doing is I'm doing a duplicate of the latest TFSEC version. I'm giving it the executable permissions and running the TFSEC across all the directories. And if I, if there is any commit, right, immediately this would, uh, this would be triggered on the main uh, branch. And if I open this, correspondingly, you would see the static configuration is failed because uh, and it, 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 if there is any potential problems right it fails with non exit uh, zero and that would fail the ci pipeline and you would see the corresponding problems being uh, shown right uh, in this way you can stop anybody uh, writing misconfiguration code and, and without uh, mis anybody writing misconfiguration code and ci can Caught it and say do, uh, you have and fail the build accordingly. One other way, if you are using GitHub Actions, right? There is an explicit uh, method which is which is using uh, tfsec sarif action. This is very good because if you actually see this, right? Uh, this tarif action is executed. And how is this executed? If you see this, right? This is actually cloning the repository and running this TF action. So if you don't want to fail the build, right? Uh, if you are, don't want to fail the build, there is an option called soft fail. If you use this argument, it will not e exit the, I mean, it will not give you a non-zero exit so that uh, the build is not failed. And what, what does this do? This, uh, this generates output in Sarif and uploads a Sarif file. Okay. What will I get after I upload the Sarif file, right? There is, in GitHub, there is something called a security. If I go to security and you could go to code scanning alerts, you would see all the failures of your TFSEC here. And uh, correspondingly, you would see which, what is the problem and what is the severity of it accordingly. So this has an, uh, I mean, uh, as soon as, if you have it in build you, during uh, and you can push the Sarif uh, file accordingly. You would see them in the code scanning alerts uh, showing what all are the problems that you have in your code. Also, there's one interesting thing, which is the PR commented, commenter. Uh, I mean, uh, not all of the teams uses a trunk-based development. If you have a PR-based development uh, of a Terraform, there is this action called PR commentator. What does this do is as soon as you raise a PR, this particular thing, uh, 
is executed and this will write uh, the comments on your PR saying these are the vulnerabilities that are found. So this is how we do it in the uh, CI uh, in terms of a PR, in terms of uh, SARIF, in terms of failing the build if there are any issues. Uh, yeah, so going with, uh, we have covered the ignores with the expiration date. We can also, there's an option also to disable few of the default checks as well. Uh, you can edit them in the config file and provide that config file when you're running the PFSec. Or if you know any of the, uh, if you already know any of the uh, IDs, you can actually ignore them by using this tag. And it has checks for AWS, Azure, GCP, CloudStack, DigitalOcean, GitHub checks, Kubernetes, and all. You can run it in uh, the CI, like I've shown you the several examples. Okay. Cool. Uh, moving back, this is the demo that we have covered. Ah, important thing is, uh, you can also have a extension in Visual Studio Code or in the JetBrains, uh, which is IntelliJ thing as well. If I read, uh, I just need to install the add-on called TFSec. Uh, and if I refresh this, uh, it, it shows me all the vulnerabilities across in my code. And for example, if I want to ignore all the, uh, or else, uh, let's see this, right? So, okay, this is saying that this particular thing is not having description. So if I want to ignore this, ignore this instance and directly the comment is added and it is done. And it will refresh and this will this will not be present anymore. For example, if I go to, uh, if I go to demo one, right? So this is what I added. Uh, okay, yeah. Not just, not just uh, it will find, it will show you the findings, but it will also give you the help for the findings. This, for example, this is the demo 001, which is added by us as a custom check. It says it's a severity high and impact by not having cost center. We'll keep the track of it. We cannot keep the track of building billing and resolution is at the time. And this is showing up in the AWS instance. Here also. Okay. Also, uh, yeah, this is how you do it. Uh, if you want to ignore all the low, also you can do is ignore all instances of the CVRP and you save them immediately, you can see this uh, action is on. Uh, I would say this is also very ha much handy while you're writing Terraform code, uh, have a TFSec plugin. Uh, while you are run writing the code itself, you can see in real time, what are the problems uh, showing up in a side pane uh, while you're writing the code itself. Yeah. Uh, Right, uh, and you can also uh, uh, get the latest of this. Uh, you can also, I mean, uh, this is also configurable. You can also edit the settings of this particular plugin to exclude the parts and also uh, exclude the uh, modules as, as well. One other interesting finding was, uh, I mean, uh, after I know TFSec and we put into my uh, uh, working uh, project, Immediately, I've seen there are several uh, several quick low hanging low hanging things that I can really fix, which are also a potential things. Uh, uh, for example, like audit logging uh, for S3 bucket is, is was missed and immediately caught with the PFSec being in place. Yeah, these cover the demo aspects of it. And okay. Now, when and where to implement this, right? So I would suggest to implement this from the day one of the project. And uh, I'll also, I mean, you can use this as part of the ID and also use it as a pre-commit hook. More importantly, what we suggest is to use it in the CI so that even if any developer is not using it uh, across, all the teams can have a common agreement on the CI saying that, okay, if you are not adhering to TFSec, your build will fail and uh, misconfigurations can be caught early in the development process. Uh, also talking about conclusions of this, right? So uh, yeah, static analysis is really cheap uh, when we to run in the project or in the CI. Uh, it has few false positives and also false negatives. 
don't treat the static analysis as the uh, as a security grade that you want to uh, use it in your project, but use this as something to know what are the things that are misconfigured or identify the issues, right? And it, it, you'll also have the shorter feedback cycle. Uh, it's uh, the early, the better uh, that you can catch them in the development cycle. Uh, rather than doing this in the production and uh, uh, facing all the problems that we have seen uh, about, uh, the, it's not just the uh, capital cost or the data loss, but it's also more importantly, the, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, it's also more importantly, the trust that uh, our clients will have on us for this, right? Uh, Nal, do you want to add more here? No, I think uh, pretty much that's what we wanted to cover. I think uh, we are also close to uh, the time. We have six more minutes. So you can use this. This, this would be a very quick uh, implementation on the project that helps you to avoid those misconfigurations. And uh, Sudams, can you uh, stop sh uh, sharing your screen for a moment? I yes. I just want to share something. So there were uh, a good number of questions on the chat, uh, chat box. So they were uh, asking like uh, which one to use terascan uh, tfsec uh, checkovi and all so everything has its own uh, uh, you know pros and cons and uh, uh, everything will come its uh, come with its own features uh, that they provide and all uh, we haven't done any uh, explicit testing on a bunch of terraform scripts on uh, what exactly they will uh, cover and all of that right so uh, we haven't run all the tools and see, hey, which one is giving more issues, which one is giving less issues and stuff like that. So it, it depends on like every tool has its own uh, inclusion of uh, checks and every tool is uh, growing. Uh, we found uh, uh, TFSEC to be actively growing because uh, after uh, it was acquired by Aqua. Uh, however, we don't deny that uh, TerraScan or Checkovi are also, uh, you know, uh, decent ones. So if you look at uh, comparison, you might have to manually compare or you might have to run uh, run these tools on some, uh, some Terraform scripts to understand, hey, how many issues is uh, Terrascan identifying, how many issues uh, TFSEC is identifying and all. And also Terrascan, and I, I don't think Terrascan will allow you to write custom rules, uh, whereas TFSEC will allow you to do that. Uh, Checkovi will allow you to do all of this, but uh, it, it's based on policies. Uh, uh, it is an OPA based tool. Uh, so all of this comes into play. So if you really want to run a comparison and uh, do that, uh, uh, think about which tool is better. Uh, you can always try doing that. We have not done any of that. Uh, when we were looking at all the tools, we found uh, TFSEC uh, as a com uh, most competing tool and we started using it and it started helping us to avoid those misconfigurations. So uh, it all depends on what one sort of other, approach. One other uh, point to add, I would say is uh, TFSEC is really growing. Uh, I mean, they're, they're very active in development. Uh, one example that we see is during working in the project, there was an issue in one of the release and we actually added a uh, pull request. They merged it very fast and within like hours, uh, thing, I mean, they're very much active in development, not just uh, while we are doing development. If you report any issues, they're actually act, acting it uh, on it very fast. So that way also we found TFSEC being more uh, more uh, growth as well. And you have seen the stars of the TFSEC also grown like a lot uh, from last within last two years when you compare with the other, other tools because they're being more active in development and they have a release every, uh, I mean, uh, we have seen in, in a day they have three releases at times as well where they're from which we can see how much fast that they're acting and the feedback that has been received. And also something that I like in their uh, approach is that uh, they're secure and insecure examples, right? Like if you look at uh, any other tool like Checkovi or uh, Terraform Scan and all, they will give you like what they are looking at and uh, what is the severity and what is the description for it. But uh, the way that uh, TFSEC gives you is they'll tell you like what is an insecure example and what is a secure example. And uh, one of the things when I first looked at uh, uh, TFSEC is that identifying that authentication authentication read that Sudam was talking about, it sounds very familiar, right? Yeah, you're being authenticated, but uh, internally authenticate, authenticate read is basically anyone who is authenticated on AWS. So that, that was so, uh, you know, uh, 
confusing that uh, i think yeah i'm still thinking about authentication but so these sort of examples have helped us big time to understand yeah uh, these are some of the uh, cloud nuances that we need to understand and go deeper on every service like if you are using s3 go read about those checks and if you are re reading uh, if you are using sqs or sns go uh, read about those checks so that will help you a lot uh, i would say go read about those checks everywhere so that you need uh, you'll understand more uh, context on what they are verifying and stuff like that so yeah so that was uh, on couple of questions in the chat box and if rahil is here uh, we'd be happy to connect with you offline to discuss about uh, checkovi and terra scan and uh, tfsec etc okay uh, so if we don't have any other questions uh, then we will close for today in case if you still have any questions or would like to further know about the topic do connect with nalini and sudham shopline uh, i'm sure they would be very happy to help you all so thank you nal and sudham i really hope that the presentation was helpful and you had good takeaways from the session uh, i have also shared the feedback from in the chat please do share your feedback uh, so that we can ensure that other sessions also go smoothly and thank yeah thanks for making this happen thank you for your time to join us today see you all next time uh, stay tuned thank you thank all thank you thank you